इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इन इंडिया ओके सो चेक दिस आउट 1 इन 7 कार्स सोल्ड इन द वर्ल्ड राइट नाउ आर इलेक्ट्रिक But how does India compare to this global ratio? India's electric vehicle market is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 90% this decade. And to be fair to India, which is much more of a two and three wheeler market than many countries in the world, I'll be taking a look at the ratio of IC engine cars to EV cars as well as the ratio of vehicles in general to EVs in general in India. So, what are those ratios? Well, for cars, it's 1 in 100. And And for vehicles in general, it's one in 21, which is three times worse than the global average of just cars. See, electric vehicles today in India have many issues. So I'm here on the roads of Bengaluru to test out that ratio, one in 21, to see if it's accurate. So let's find out. Now, while we wait, let's talk about the future because just this last February, Nitin Gadkari said that by 2030, India would have 2 crore EVs on its roads. And to achieve this, India would actually need to 12x the number of EVs that are currently on its roads, and that too in just 7 years. Hey, wow. That was actually spot on. I think it was like 21 or 22 vehicles that we counted before we saw that electric auto rickshaw. So, the number actually is pretty accurate. So if our little car counting experiment taught me anything, it's that India does still have a little bit of a ways to go in terms of EV adoption. But why? Well, currently India is pretty heavily reliant upon other countries for batteries and cells, which makes them expensive to import. On top of that, there's just not enough charging stations in India right now. Here's a map of all of the charging infrastructure dedicated to EVs in the country, and this might look like a lot, but then take a look at what Europe looks like. And also, here's what the United States looks like. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but both of these problems lead to the largest issue of them all, stunted consumer demand. See, because EVs are so expensive, because the batteries need to be imported from outside of India, and also because there's not enough charging infrastructure, consumers are just opting not to buy EVs. But there is one company trying to address all of these issues head on. In fact, they just recently built India's first ever commercial lithium ion cell manufacturing. Manufacturing facility. This startup is also enabling the installation of charging stations across the country. They're doing something in this industry that nobody else has done before. And so today, we're going to be talking about two things. Firstly, we're going to be unpacking the massive problems that India is facing in growing its EV industry. And then secondly, we're going to be taking a look at the solutions that Log9 is pioneering to solve these problems. 40 to 50% of the cost of an EV is its battery pack. And the price of that battery pack increases substantially when you're importing batteries from China. But even the Indian EV battery manufacturers that are making Making their batteries in India are really just assembling cells that are manufactured outside of India. And India isn't alone here. Most of the world is reliant upon China for its battery cells, given that 80% of the world's cell manufacturing happens in China. Why? Well, lithium is a pretty valuable metal. It's only mined in a couple of places around the world, and as you can see here, China has a lot of it. South America has a lot too, and the United States has quite a bit as well, but India Well, India has none, at least not yet. See, there's actually a lot of lithium in India, but none of it has been extracted as of yet. How much lithium is there in the country? Well, nobody's quite sure, but the initial estimates of a lithium reserve in Jammu and Kashmir has pegged the amount at 5.9 million tons, placing the amount of lithium in India at number 6 globally. Now, unearthing and processing all of that lithium will probably take several years, maybe as much as a decade. And in the meantime, due to a scarcity of lithium, India still relies heavily on imports to produce EV batteries. Now, where does Log9 fit into all of this? Well, like every other battery company in the country, they also have to import lithium from outside of India, but what's unique about them and this is why they're building this proprietary technology is they're able to take that lithium and turn them into battery cells and then eventually into battery packs that are specifically optimized for India's tropical conditions. Log9 cell manufacturing facility has a 50 megawatt hour capacity with an annual output of 8,000 three-wheeler lithium-ion batteries per year. Now, why am I bringing up three-wheelers here? Well, three-wheelers actually make up a bulk of Log9's business right now because three-wheelers in India are a massive opportunity when it comes to EVs. Here's a snapshot of India's EV industry as of FY23. 
4% went to electric cars, 34% to three-wheelers, and then 62% to two-wheelers. And the surprising thing here is that in this entire market, there's not a single electric two-wheeler, three-wheeler, or four-wheeler company that is manufacturing their own lithium-ion cells in India. They're all importing those cells from outside of India. Logdine's batteries are actually much, much safer than batteries that are being made outside of India. Why? Well, the reason is that Log9's batteries, which include their RapidX 2000 battery for two-wheelers and their RapidX 8000 battery for three-wheelers, are AIS-156 certified and have advanced titanium-based nanoparticles inside of their lithium-ion cells, which makes Log9 cells much safer than conventional lithium-ion cells. In other words, this is new-age technology being packed inside of these AIS-156 certified batteries, which is actually a pretty big deal because the government of India just recently created this AIS-156 certification specifically to combat the prevalence and increase in the number of EV battery fires that are happening in India. Also, because Log9 is manufacturing their cells indigenously in India, they're able to offer EV batteries at competitive prices. In fact, they're currently one of the market leaders in India's electric three-wheeler battery market with a between 20 and 25% market share in the L5 cargo segment. But who are their customers in this segment? Well, so far, the biggest deal that Log9 has made in this space is with Omega Psyche Mobility. Log9 supplies them with the batteries for their Rage Plus Rapid EV line of three-wheelers. And besides this, they also have customers in the three-wheeler space like Gravel and 3Eco. Then there's also Quantum Energy in the two-wheeler space with whom Log9 recently launched the world's fastest charging two-wheeler, which gets charged in 12 minutes. And then for their four-wheeler platform, they have a partnership with Northway Motors. They're also innovating right now in the LFP battery segment. LFP stands for lithium iron phosphate. And these batteries are cheaper to make, provide superior range to lithium ion, but are a little bit less powerful, which actually makes them perfect for three-wheelers. Now, moving over to two-wheelers, Log9 is actually just getting started in this space. Like I mentioned earlier, they've partnered with Quantum Energy for these amazing 12-minute charging two-wheelers, and the reason for them getting into the space is pretty clear. Two-wheelers make up 62% of the EV market in India right now, but why are they entering into this space so late? Well, that AIS-156 certification that I mentioned earlier was actually really hard won. Log9 had actually developed their rapid charging batteries for two-wheelers all the way back in January of 2021, just before the big EV craze hit India. And they were all ready to take these batteries to market when the first wave of EV battery fires hit the country. As such, the government of India introduced much higher standards for EV battery manufacturers in the country. And even though Log9's tech did meet the government standards, the certification process took much longer than expected due to the sheer number of companies applying for that certification. What happened with that was that uh, our batteries were there for approval and certification and uh, uh, there was almost a complete embargo on any new certifications of two-wheeler batteries. Yeah. Which is really bad luck. Which is really bad luck, right? So it's there, it is the safest battery out there. Like we had really proven it that you can literally throw it in open flame, it will not catch fire. And no matter what you do with it, you drill through the cells, you kind of cut it, you kind of throw it from a rooftop, it will not catch fire. You burn it and like you really put enough fondness and try to burn it, it will not catch fire. So, but the point is that uh, if the certification is just not coming through for anybody, like you are part of that gang. So that kind of delayed the entire two-wheeler launch for at least good three, four quarters. And uh, then finally in January, we were able to, this January, we were able to get the certification and started rolling them out. So that's why in the meantime, Log9 had targeted the electric three-wheeler space. But now that they have that AIS-156 certification for both their two-wheeler and three-wheeler batteries, they've got some pretty big plans. In FY24, Log9 is planning to deploy more than 4,000 EVs across metros like Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Chennai, and Mumbai. And they've already established a handful of partnerships in the two-wheeler space as well. These are companies like Hollow Mobility, Fay Bikes, and Wizzy Logistics, which will be making use of Log9's Insta Charger network for their fleet operations. Now, speaking of charging networks, according to India's Minister of State for Heavy Industries, there are almost 11,000 public charging stations in India, which brings us to the next problem that India's EV ecosystem faces. Meanwhile, in the United States, there are more than 130,000. But guess what? The United States only has 3 million EVs on the road, compared to India's 2.17 million. 
So that means that in the United States, there's one charging station for every 23 EVs, whereas in India, there's one charging station for every 199 EVs. But why is that? Well, the answer is actually business cannibalism. See, when it comes to EVs, the rising tide lifts all boats. If every CPO, that's charge point operator, agrees to interoperability, meaning that any scooter can charge with any CPO's charger and vice versa, then EV adoption in India will increase much, much much faster because more charging stations means less range anxiety for consumers, which will lead to more sales. Of course, companies usually have a hard time working together because they have their own agendas, their own goals, and that's where InstaCharge comes in. InstaCharge is a platform where any CPO can list their charging locations and any EV driver can see all of these charging stations. It's kind of like Google Maps, but specifically for EVs. And so thanks to this network, EVs, CPOs, and fleet operators can all work together seamlessly on one platform while also preserving their privacy and their proprietary data. Oh, and also Insta in InstaCharge is actually named after the fact that EV owners using charging stations on the InstaCharge platform can actually just scan a QR code and pay with any UPI-based payment method, including WhatsApp, which is a first in this industry. So payments happen easily and instantly too. And now finally, we have arrived at the third and biggest problem facing India's EV industry, and that's lack of consumer demand. Because of the high price of EVs in India, due to the fact that lithium ion battery cells are being imported from outside of the country, and also because of the lack of charging stations, the lack of charging infrastructure across India, consumer demand has been stunted. Without adequate charging infrastructure and cheaper EVs, India's EV industry will continue to languish, which is why InstaCharge and indigenously manufactured, safer, more affordable batteries like Log9's RapidX series are hugely important to the future success of India's EV industry. But of course, without actually manufacturing these vehicles themselves, how is Log9 able to have such an outsized impact on this industry? Well, the answer is actually in the form of partnerships. First and foremost, Log9 is partnered with Amara Raja Batteries, and this is their single biggest partnership. The company is also an investor in Log9. They own 15.4% of the company, and they bring heavy industry know-how and connections to the table, which is how Log9 has been able to score the big name customers that it has. There's also a laundry list of businesses that use Log9's batteries for their electric vehicles, like for example, electric bus company, Ika. There are also three-wheeler customers like Indianta Ventures, Let's Transport, and FYN Mobility. You've also got electric three-wheeler OEM 3EV, which I mentioned earlier, and their fleet venture 3 Eco. And then finally, there's Log9's partnership with Three Wheels United and Equaro. And this is actually where we move outside of the realm of hardware and into the realm of financing because EV financing right now is a huge opportunity. EVs are still expensive in India and people are a little bit afraid to buy them. They worry that battery range will decline over time and they'll need to cough up half of the price of the vehicle to afford a new battery. And so this is where Log9 comes in because they offer unlimited kilometer warranties on their batteries up to six years with an assured buyback of up to 1.2 lakh rupees for three-wheeler batteries. And this means that EV owners don't need to worry about the cost of replacing their batteries because it's covered by Log9, which is why this three-way partnership makes a lot of sense. Three Wheels United, a global fintech company for EV financing, and Equero Guarantees will provide guarantees for this financing. So in partnership with Log9, they're gonna be deploying 500 three-wheeler electric vehicles across Bengaluru, Chennai, Mumbai, and NCR over the next six months. And Log9 will be doing the maintenance and servicing of these batteries and vehicles. So now we're starting to see Log9's business from a bit of a different perspective. Yes, they do manufacture battery cells and battery packs for EV. EVs, but in order to remain competitive in the electric vehicle space without actually manufacturing the vehicles themselves, they have to do a little bit extra. They have to be a little bit creative. And that's exactly what Log9 is doing. So at the top of the triangle, you have, of course, the battery tech, Log9's primary focus, and their core revenue driver. And this is their RapidX packs, their TIB LTO cells, LTO standing for lithium titanate oxide here. And then in the future, they will also be manufacturing the LFP cells 
channels that I mentioned earlier. But then on the left side of the triangle, you have the ecosystem infrastructure. Log9 does battery maintenance. There's also the InstaCharge charging stations. They also partner with fleet operators and EV manufacturers to outfit their vehicles with their technology. And they also have a hand in vehicle financing thanks to their partnerships too. And then on the right side of the triangle is something that most people assume that Log9 has simply forgotten about. They've given up on this, but in fact, they haven't. This is amazing technology that Log9 actually became famous for in the early days, and that's their aluminum fuel cell technology. In reality, this is something that they've continued to work on in stealth for a different application than they originally imagined, which was for EVs. And this application is energy storage. See, India is witnessing the worst power outage in decades because coal reserves in several states are running out and demand for electricity is surging, which is why India literally loses between 1 and 1.9% 1 of its GDP thanks to these power cuts. And so Log9 is actually taking this challenge as an opportunity. They've developed a suite of products under the brand name Zap Up, which is a range of stationary storage batteries using LTO and LFP cell technology to ensure uninterrupted power supply. Log9 is going to be rolling out its AFC technology for stationary power very soon, and here's Akshay on that exact topic. So technology has progressed significantly since we last spoke, right? Uh, Which was uh, 2019. 2019, yeah. So from 2019, the power density has gone up by 2025x. And uh, the energy density has tripled. Uh, we are now, we're, what we're doing is we're putting it together as a standalone system as an alternative to a diesel generator. Uh, the power backup, long duration power backup solution is the first prototype that we are building. Uh, we already have an arrangement with the uh, Worldwide Federation uh, to put up a demo system in Sundarbans, right? And uh, then we're looking at more extreme conditions in Rajasthan and stuff like that. So, so that we can test out the systems in really extreme conditions and uh, then kind of uh, launch it in the market. Uh, this uh, deployment should start to happen by the end of this year. Um, and then uh, the first product that would come out of AFC would be a diesel generator alternative. Now, before we wrap things up here, I want to go into the company's financials, and they are a private company, so they're going to keep most of that information pretty close to their chest. But what we do know is that they were last valued at a quarter of a billion dollars back when they raised their Series B in January of 2023. At that time, they'd raised $40 million, and also the biggest names on their cap table right now are, of course, Amara Raja Batteries, there's also Petronas Ventures, Xfinity Ventures, and Sequoia Capital. We also have their overall revenue for FY23, it was 10 million dollars and a majority of this came from the sale of their rapid x batteries so that is log 9 materials in a nutshell they're one of the few companies in india with an early mover advantage in the lithium ion space they have very solid strategic partnerships and stakeholders and a deep understanding of product r d and manufacturing and if there's one thing that i know about gold rushes is that you don't want to be a miner instead you want to be the person selling pickaxes and shovels and it feels like log 9 is in that position position in this metaphor. EVs, of course, are the gold rush, but you don't want to be digging for gold with your bare hands. EV battery cells and a robust network of charging stations are required for this industry to flourish, and Log9 is perfectly positioned to supply these to the Indian market. And with the lithium reserve discovered in Jammu and Kashmir, it's very possible that within this decade, we'll see an Indian EV battery cell manufacturer, a startup, Log9 Materials, become a leader in this space here in India. And and not only that, but actually stepping out onto the global stage to become a world leader in this space as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.